Hello folks, um, my name's Martin Jones and I'd like to give you a little uh, mini presentation on the key subject of provisions. Um, I want to talk to you about a key topic within P2, uh, corporate reporting, Graham Holt's P2, corporate reporting within the ACCA um, syllabus. Um, it's a big, big, big subject, P2, but the level of knowledge that you actually need at P2 is, is not enormous. Um, honestly, it's, it's surprising, actually. The level of knowledge that you need is not enormous. What is enormous is the scope of your knowledge. So you need to know a little bit about everything. I'm going to give you a little mini presentation, so obviously I'm not going to give you everything. But what I am going to give you is plenty enough for the subject of provisions. There's a really cool little mnemonic you can use for provisions, and it goes like this. You recognise a provision if you spot the rot. If you spot the rot, you provide for the rot. If not, not. Let's give you the mnemonic there. I'll just get you a fresh new brand new page on my Windows journal. So R O T. In order to recognise a provision as a liability on the balance sheet, there must be a reasonably reliable estimate. There must be an obligation. And um, tricky one, a bit of a mouthful, there must be a transfer. First two are pretty easy, aren't they? And probably very familiar. Third one may be familiar as well. In order to recognise a provision, you have to fulfil three criteria according to the relevant IFRS, IS uh, 37. Um, rot, in order to recognise a provision, you have to spot the rot. R, reasonably reliable estimate. You have to be able to come up with some sort of a guess of the approximate cost that's going to flow out in the future. O, you have to have a present obligation to a future economic outflow. That present obligation can actually be legal or constructive. Um, legal obligation is obvious, it's a legal obligation. But a constructive obligation is a tricky one. And some commentators think it's frankly naff. But it is in the IFRS and the constructive obligation is an obligation you have because of what you've said. Okay, so you can have an obligation because the law requires you to do something, or you can have an obligation because of what you've said. One's called legal, the other one's called constructive. And finally, T, transfer. Standing at the now and looking forward, cash must be expected to transfer out in the future. Or using the technical phrase that's within the IFRS, um, it must be expected that there will be a transfer of economic benefit outside of the entity as a result of the past obliging event. <laughs> in other words, standing at the now cash must be expected to transfer out in the future. And you have to fulfil those three criteria. And they're not all that difficult, are they? So what's the problem with P2? Well, the problem with P2 is when students are working, especially in the B section of P2, well, they just tend to write down, frankly, any old crap before they've engaged their brain. Now, I've written an article on the subject of getting hold of yourself, focusing on the requirement, focusing on the scenario, and really putting down relevant data. The article is called Easy Tiger, and I've put it into Student Accountant. Um, as I've mentioned to um, the, the previous uh, videos, the other videos in this uh, uh, key topics series, I seem to be um, one of the favourite writers of um, uh, student accountants at the moment and long may it continue, I hope so. And um, I've got quite a few articles in there at the moment. But there's one really nice short one that I think you'd benefit from and it's, it's related to Spot the Rot because, you know, that criteria, spot the rot, is only going to get you marks if the scenario talks about a provision. So just have a look at the scenario. Make sure that we are required to spot the rot before you whack down the mnemonic. Now, 
The article I've written is called Easy Tiger, because what I'm trying to do is get you to go, Easy Tiger, before you start writing, get a grip of yourself and really read the scenario, really read the requirements and make sure that you're making sense when you communicate to the markers. Um, the article is accessible on accaglobal.com. You go into P2, you go into the technical articles um, button within P2 and you'll see there's a list of articles there and um, the, I hope the ACCA have labelled label, it by the label that I've used, which is Easy Tiger. It hasn't been published actually yet, um, as we speak at the moment, but I'm sure it will be published by the time you get hold of this video. So have a look online at the article Easy Tiger, and that'll give you a flavour of how to get a grip of yourself rather than going crazy and writing down everything you know rather than writing down relevant information. So there's two things I'm trying to communicate to you here. One is a recommendation to have a look at that article that helps you with exam technique, really, which I can't do in a five-minute lecture. So one is a recommendation to have a look at that article which helps you with exam technique. And the other thing is really just to teach you the technical subject of spot the rot. If we spot the rot, we provide for the rot. If not, not. Good. And good luck with that.